Hello, all you sexy people out there. Welcome to another episode of Talking and Chillin'. I, of course, am your host, the Grand Blue, the grandest of all the blues. And here with me, as always, we've tried getting rid of them, but they keep coming back. They're like boomerangs. Yummy on. Gosh, am I everyone? How's everyone doing tonight? And of course, Chris. I'm sorry, I keep coming back. Bitch, you're my fashion accessory. Ah, That's how sure. this works out. <laughs> yeah, right, right. I am the star of the show. Okay. Despite the fact I'll never host these because I'm too lazy to upload anything to my YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Lazy, worthless, and tomato, tomato. To be fair, that is true. <laughs> but, but, funny. <laughs> but you have no argument here, because you said I beat you and you go. Enough said. I beat my glare guy your deck. I beat you with my uh, with my. Former pals. Enough said. Once. Once. Yes. And I've only started playing for like the past month. You want to go a second round? I am free whenever you are, Chris. I don't think you understand. Technicalities don't count. I will hold this over you. I will not have another match. <laughs> because technically, <laughs> I have a hundred percent win rate over you. <laughs> no, you don't. I've won one. Well, I can't remember which one you won, but whatever. <laughs> no, that means you have a 50. It wasn't 50 unless you beat me two times. I think you only beat me once. I think we've what had three matches sense. in total. You've won one, and I've won one. But I've won one of two decks. That doesn't count. But that means we've had at least two matches. And if you've only won one... I would actually mean it so I have a 66.6 recurring. I don't care, it's not 100, which means you still suck. <laughs> that me have my victories, okay? No, you will... No! Any, of, any other time I play that game, Children, Owen makes Children, me suffer. Calm down. I yeah, like the fact he slowly tried to stop <laughs> argument when I, when I directed it at him. <laughs> and it's no fun allowed deck. Anyway. Off topic, back to topic. Anywho, now that we are uh, still on the topic of Owen's cancer deck, let's oh. just go ahead and move on to... <laughs> insult to injury. <laughs> it's not an insult if it's true. <laughs> it's the harsh reality. <laughs> Come on, Owen, even you have to admit your deck is evil. It's evil, but not cancer, because people can't get around okay. it. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Just for everyone who's listening who might not know, he has an all spellcaster deck and he uses me just village, right? So um, we can't play spell hand. cards unless we have a card with another spell. Then he uses left hand on top of that, so we can't freely activate our traps while having to doubling up well while having to double up on them. Can we also point out he's got a chocolate magician girl, so he can discard cards and then bring them back. Um oh, also he's got that. Witch of the Black yeah. Forest now. Then there's Trapeze position, Magician, which means that you can't burn him with battle then damage. Then there's Trishula, because and just fuck you. you pull them off. <laughs> oh, and then there's the constant cards in his deck that keep you from using the cards by either putting them in face-down defense mode, destroying them, or him using them as his own summoning tools. And then there's Fairy Tail, whatever it's called, the one he calls Foxy. They'll just stop you from having anything out on the field, really. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that, that card will bump your stuff right back to your hand before you can say, And now, behold my attack! Oh, well, that happened. He's not fun to play against. If you see Yami Owen on Dev Pro, <laughs> please do not enter a match with him. Unless you're using a full no, spellcaster no, 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 no. deck, into, then you'll have into, a chance. Into, into the d realm of Yami Owen, if you see him on Dev Pro, I challenge anyone to try and beat him. 
<laughs> I want anyone to try. Enters <laughs> like the food, just like everything we described. We just build a deck to deliberately counter. <laughs> Yeah, but we didn't even mention all the monsters. <laughs> we just mentioned the evil ones, and I didn't even mention the one I hate the most. I'm guessing Trisha laughs. No. I said Trisha. I hate Breaker. Although, I hate Breaker although Trick the Clown is also quite annoying. Because then, Trick you know, you always have a caster out on the field, so we can't even try and get past your village that way. Unless you can attack twice in one turn, which isn't impossible, but still, it's there even a point. Yeah, and then we have Breaker, so if we can't play our spell of traps, you can just get rid of them systematically. <laughs> Literally, you have to summon two monsters within your first turn that you're able to attack, or he's going to summon two spellcasters onto the field, which which means you can't you can't beat him because he always has one extra spellcaster. <laughs> For I guess what? He almost have. always gets me just most always gets me just village and left hand. First turn, and don't ask me that. When he doesn't have any spellcasters, that is usually the point where you have just run out of cards to use. <laughs> <laughs> like, if he, if he does not have spellcasters on the field, and Junior Rifle has traps and things don't hurt you, just fucking rush him. <laughs> Pull all the bullshit out. Yes. Just do anything you think. I don't care if he has <laughs> face downs. <laughs> just, like, anything is better than what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> You have to <laughs> bum rush him. <laughs> Anywho. Next day. <laughs> Anywho. Speaking of Yu-Gi-Oh cards, there's new Yu-Gi-Oh cards coming out. Owen. Yeah. <laughs> one of them a spellcaster that could defend his entire trap in that spellcaster zone. Isn't that fun? <laughs> uh, right, you thought you could get past that left hand. <laughs> now you can. <laughs> right. Yeah. There's three sets called the Legendary of the Dragon series set. One of them is, is Yuhimoto's, one is Zen Truesdale's, and the other one is Yuya from the Yu Gi Oh! R5 series. So they have different. Yep. So the Yuhimoto one has all the Dark Magician support, the Zen Truesdale one has all the Cyber Tech, Cyber Dragons, and XYZ. Dragon catapult with as another form of armed dragon with it, and and, and crystal beast, uh, god dragon in it. If I remember correctly, just a whole bunch of dick. Yeah, D different <laughs> kind of, of different from the from that series, basically, based GX era stuff. And the GX era, the best Yu Gi Oh era, because you got to get your game on. <laughs> Throwing GX. down the face now. Wait, which one was GX? Was that the one with the motorcycles? No, that's with Judai, oh. Jaden. That, 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 that was with, you know, catch on a flippity flip. <laughs> Wait, is that, yes, GX, is that the one with the high school? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Throwing down the face down. Get your game on. Yes, with Judai. See, that's my kind of series, because that's where my roids come from. <laughs> yes. And then the 5D series is all the Odd Eyes dragons. Ooh, I hope I get some more roid support. I want to be the winners. I don't yeah. care about Odd Eyes dragons. I only care for the performer pals. Yeah. No, it could work, but I refuse nothing. them. You get nothing <laughs> and you like it. Twi yeah. Twi I need more! <laughs> Yes. Give but, me my tune. Yes, but people are more uh, like everyone's happy with the Yugi collection one because of of a certain monster was shown in exclusive. Was worth what was originally worth like two hundred quid each, and that is the Apprentice Illusion Magician Girl, and they have reprinted her, so she is legal to play in Europe. So yay for us! <laughs> well, technically, yay for me and you, and I don't even play physically. <laughs> See, this is the part where everyone in Europe realizes, wait a minute, I've played Yu-Gi-Oh! with a guy named Yami Owen, and he's coming <laughs> back later. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I am actually coming back into, into competitive plays, starting... I don't mind people watching. Yami Owen only uses cards that he physically owns. <laughs> yes. And, and Basically, he has too much money. <laughs> yeah, he has too much time on his hand. I did that research. So yeah, the collection of each box set is 
Twenty dollars each. Wow, that's not so bad. So you get every single card in that collection. Hmm. It's basically a special collector's edition set. So what you can play with. I mean, if I ever wanted to get back into the real life Yu-Gi-Oh circuit, that's how I'd do it. Yes, but technically, if there's like a set of booster packets I'm into, and there's a certain series of monsters I want, I just buy the whole box. 60, 60 I mean, if you're gonna come back, you might as well come back with a giant middle finger. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yep, I'm playing with it. Yes, as I, I already built my deck already in real life. That deck, what was a prototype of deck, right? That's the real thing. And we faced it, and it's a yeah. And probably we're going to face it later tonight because, Owen, I want to destroy it. <laughs> yeah. I want to tonight. watch and offer support from the guy, from sidelines like Tay like or whatever. You from stay in the Shadow Realm where you belong, Chris. <laughs> if we're only this card was as strong as our friendship. <laughs> I'll never get over that line. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I'll never get over why someone list decided to listen to her and draw on your hands to create a seal <laughs> of friendship that apparently is in permanent marker that's magic. <laughs> I don't know where Shitea got a magic marker, a literal magic marker. <laughs> I'm I, per I, 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 per I prefer a bridged version of her. Oh yeah, totally. We 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 can't yeah, we can't especially, especially, especially when Mark possesses her. It is I, T. Gardner. I must. Sh um, I am having my period. I must shove many tampons up my vagina to avoid getting pregnant. <laughs> Anywho. Okay. Well, I'm T. I have right. getting pregnant. But yes, I don't know where she got. M literally, it's magic because this marker has shown up back on their hands. <laughs> When dark magic tries to kill them, <laughs> yeah, I think apparently Taya is a witch. <laughs> I think she just got that from darts. She's quite very likely was darts. Uh, Actually, you know what? Like, if they're dark, like according to Yu-Gi-Oh, all the cards are real. They're just monsters trapped in their own realm, right? Yeah. I think Taya is a dark magician girl that just escaped from her card and has just been screwing with Yugi for the last five years. Wasn't <laughs> the last there a whole years. thing where she was dressed as the dark magician girl? Yes. I'm just, like, I'm just saying. This only confirms my theory. <laughs> Hashtag exposed. She <laughs> is evil. <laughs> and she is going to rule us all. <laughs> and have you noticed that she's the only one who hasn't even tried to play Yu-Gi-Oh? Does she play Yu-Gi-Oh? Oh, yeah, she on does. Occasion. She's played it on occasion, and one of her victories was literally because Mai was like, okay, I feel sorry for you. Aww. <laughs> and she beats the Penguin dude with the Dark Magician. <laughs> I'm sorry, who? The Penguin dude? She lost? Did she not lose to the, peng the Penguin dude? I'm pretty no. sure she lost to the Penguin dude. No, she won. No, she didn't. Right. She won. She won. Yeah. Oh. oh man, I forgot the penguin. Well, you know what? The penguin gets beat out by a guy in a leather suit and a twelve-year-old every night. So, forget the, the penguin dude in the bridge series just magical. Do you know what I've always wanted to be? A penguin, a girl, well, a woman, <laughs> to be exact, a teenage girl in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I mean, just, just forget her. Forget her. She is a witch. She is magic. And Honest. she is evil. She is evil. And she will rule us all. Maybe she will. Oh, you were about to admit something. Was she your first anime waifu? No. <laughs> she was your first anime wife. No, Sonata was. Actually. Until 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 the Dark Magician girl was. Lady Sonata. Lady Sinatra. Sonata. 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 Chris, look Wait, from up. Naruto. Yeah. Did, did he just say from Naruto? Yes. I think he's dying just... inside to know oh, I'm associated brain... with you. I thought his brain was vomiting. I'm dying inside. Well, I love Do you know 
I'm gonna even say, know me. that people even like the people I associate with even like Naruto because it's trash. You heard me? That it's trash fanboy stirring the shit. Naruto is fucking trash. I Believe it. Why I like it because originally it's from an original Japanese play of Princess Inada and Jiraiya versus uh, Mutsuharu in a Japanese play, but they actually put in the Naruto series, and she's technically the princess slug. See, uh, I only respect one slug, and that's a Lord Slug. Hey, Lord Slug. <laughs> yeah, but he uses slug magic, and Jiraiya uses frog magic or toad magic. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You can't. You have to start making things up like slug magic. <laughs> it's true. She can <laughs> giant slugs what can heal people. Again, it just sounds like you got really jitsu. high. <laughs> My, my, my favorite thing about Naruto is sexy jitsu. Because turn into an attractive naked teenage girl in front of your master, that's not creepy. <laughs> it's not creepy until it becomes part of the exam. <laughs> like an official thing. It's like, you have to be able to perform this jutsu. <laughs> and if it doesn't turn out well, you will be expelled. <laughs> like, then it'll be creepy. <laughs> Because I promise you, at least one of them will become a teacher just to see that jutsu performed every year. <laughs> it's like only one student only performed it, and now it's Naruto, and that was his own ninjutsu. I know. So ninjutsu want... is to gender bend and get naked in front of an old man, and the censors were so... cool with this. Okay, so Chris, what you're saying is his only personal move is anime power. He's, fucking He's able to derive all the anime essence and become a naked blonde Japanese girl. <laughs> that is his ability. He has the ability to summon anime. <laughs> what is your Many... Naruto is a good anime. The action scenes are awesome. Yeah, the, when they shame. happen. Don't you better believe it. Okay, you know what, Chris? Using their catchphrase as a weapon isn't helping. <laughs> Believe it! <laughs> it doesn't help unless you show your face and you have to do that thing that Naruto does with his thumb where he, like, twitches no. and scratches his nose. No, no. Do you want to know why? Do you want to know why? Because I'm not sad. <laughs> Believe it! You know what? I think secretly, Chris, you have fox whiskers, and you're just jealous that Naruto got accepted while you got picked on for it. Until he comes out as a fur furry, I will not accept him. No, he doesn't count as a furry. He's appropriating my culture! No, 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 okay, no, no, no. Anyone who's listening, no, I'm not. Shut up. <laughs> Yeah, Owen. He's Owen's right. See, furries are people pretending to be animals. He is an animal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He's got the possession of the nine-tailed fox. If anything, <laughs> honestly, have you seen him eat in the show? He is an animal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> doesn't even like every it. anime protagonist. Like Goku. <laughs> Like Natsu. Okay, you know what? Goku isn't an animal. He's an idiot. Okay, then we'll bug Natsu then. Because he's basically the exact same when it comes to eating habits. Wait, who? Natsu. Okay, Natsu is part dragon. <laughs> and Luffy is... Well... Pretty sure he's just a stomach that can punch things. <laughs> <laughs> like, re like that's about all he is. Anyway, um, speaking of anime, um, the My Hero Academia Academia is coming to a close. Season two. Um, yeah, nice. coming. They are coming towards their final episode of season two, where it will be an epic showdown against and her. 
I'm not allowed We're to not say saying because Owen one... hasn't watched it because he's a little bitch. Owen hasn't watched it. Even though, like, I mean, yeah, no, it's just an epic showdown. And it's going to be epic. Um, I recently just saw the latest episode. Oh, holy crap. <laughs> just like non-disclosure, no spoilers. I'm just saying right now, holy crap. <laughs> it was hilarious. It was godlike. Anyway. <laughs> I'm sure Owen will enjoy himself when he watches it later. Yeah, it's um, watching it. Uh, so the next ep- the last episode should be free to watch on Anime Two uh, by next week. I think by next week it should be up, it, unless they do a two parter, which wouldn't surprise me. Which then means that it won't be done until the weekend after this weekend coming up after this one about two more weeks and it'll be over um but already season three has been confirmed and they are already working on it (laughs) Mm. they are already working on season three (laughs) which is said to have more villains and more fun um which uh i'm going to wait to do a whole predictions of season three and what to expect from me and Owen, after Owen has binge watched the series and can have some real opinions on the characters. And of course, Retro will be there with us because he has read the manga and will make sure that we don't say something stupid and crazy like, I think that Froppy is going to be the main character of season three. Like, Bitch, f- don't, <laughs> don't get my hopes up. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I would totally watch it. <laughs> I would keep watching. <laughs> Sue was just the main character for the rest of the time being. <laughs> I wouldn't stop watching. <laughs> I want a spin-off show. I want a spin-off. Just Froppy. The only life of a frog girl. I want it to be called um, No Deku Sue Froppy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I wanted it to be. I just wanted it to be Froppy. <laughs> the Adventures of Froppy. I want comic books, people. Get to writing. <laughs> comic books, manga. I don't care which one it is. I want just Froppy. <laughs> Fighting something stupid. I don't care if it's Cthulhu. <laughs> which, I'm debating whether or not Froppy would win. <laughs> Probably sure. I'm pretty sure. How, I'm, uh, I'm debating how she would win. I know Froppy would win <laughs> against Cthulhu. I'm just debating how. <laughs> Anywho, but yeah, season three has been confirmed. So we'll look forward to a uh, prediction uh, podcast live stream thingy coming soon. No, I wasn't invited to um, it. Weird as fuck. He's well. He he could come, but he probably won't. <laughs> I won't, bitch. <laughs> Uh, boy, I, would you do it really... just, I would do it just to spite you. <laughs> okay, if you insist upon showing up. Ew! Um, <laughs> yes, look forward to that. And also, look forward to... We've been missing it every once in a while. We've been missing it these last couple of episodes. But we are going to be coming back with another debate of Death Battle! Yay! The new death battle debate will be Wonder Woman versus Thor, the God of Thunder. So that'll be fun. See who wins. We're gonna put to settle the debate once and for all. Marvel versus DC. <laughs> but it's Marvel's four. Avengers. Just jealous. I don't like Marvel's Four because I'm very into Norse mythology and I hate everything they get wrong. I know it's supposed to be fucking entertainment and shit, but like if they get one thing wrong, it triggers me. <laughs> but the reason they use characters like Thor is because they're allowed to. But yeah, I understand why. It's just the fact that they get something wrong in Norse mythology. I'm like, I did not spend for ages learning about this voluntarily <laughs> for a stupid fucking comic book to get it wrong. Hercules. 
And they do that because he's legal. <laughs> Disney's Hercules is worth it. I mean... Like, are you telling me it wasn't James Wood as Hades wasn't worth it? Of course it was worth Do not. Do not <laughs> go there with me. Okay? <laughs> okay? Hades is one of my favorite Disney villains. Do not even. <laughs> <laughs> okay? I love his charismatic business attitude. I love everything about him. <laughs> My favorite's probably just Yzma, because she's just hilarious to watch. Yzma's hilarious to watch, sure. However, uh, well, I wouldn't be surprised. Definitely However, he's definitely probably uh, top three. Oh, yeah, no. You, uh, like, I love Hades. I also love Hades because I'm pretty sure the Hercules TV show was made because people wanted to see what else Hades could do. <laughs> <laughs> like, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, the whole concept was like, guys... Is, um, is it just me, or does anyone else want to see more Hades? Yeah, but <laughs> the movie's over, and we're not stupid enough to make a sequel. No, but what if we made a TV show? Like a prequel, you know? We can see Hades kind of mess around with teenage Hercules, so he can maybe do stuff. Okay, fine, whatever. <laughs> as long as we get more Hades. Because, <laughs> like, Hercules just got thrown into random stuff, and Hades had the most fun. <laughs> You know, Yzma is great, though. Yzma is a great Disney villain. Are you kidding? Oh, my goodness. She's the right kind of person you want to hate. Krog <laughs> was the best henchman. <laughs> Poor lever! Ah, Poor I... lever! <laughs> Why do we even have that lever? <laughs> Open the store now, and I'll put Krog to the ground. Wouldn't it be or? Open the door now, or else I'll burn your house to the ground. Or, I'll burn your which house one is now. it? That's a very important. <laughs> but which one is it? That seems like a really important conjecture. <laughs> <laughs> okay, open this door, and then we'll burn their house to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> right. I just love the whole sneaking scene. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> And then they just take a pause and just like, oh my god, is he doing his own theme music? <laughs> if you ever wondered what Braxton would be as a Disney supervillain, Gronk. Which, I mean, Crunk, you know, in the Cusco high school episodes, Crunk was pretty cool. Yeah. He wasn't He wasn't even a bad guy anymore. He was just there. Just there. <laughs> yeah, he didn't really do anything evil, except for every once in a while. But even then, he was just, like, doing it. Like, he was the only one who never figure, who could never figure out that he's most jams that he'd be revealed oh. in that last episode that he always knew, and he always just acts shocked. <laughs> Because it makes Yzma sound smarter. <laughs> <laughs> it makes Yzma feel better knowing that he's an idiot. Who's like, right. <gasps> <laughs> Yzma! <laughs> it's like, well, duh. <laughs> oh, great crunk. Good crunk. You get a cookie crunk. Crunk <laughs> uh, gets all the cookies. Gets all of the cookies. I'm pretty sure he's indestructible. I'm pretty sure. Well, if you just have spinach puffs, then yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I never even liked your spinach. Well, oh, never liked your spinach puffs ever. 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 It's like, <gasps> oh, oh, she's going down. She's going down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what can we do? That'll work. <laughs> Yeah, the defiant fetch should always come from above, oh. neither cop, but it's just a chandelier. <laughs> He's like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I love it. Like, even his angel and devil side were hilarious. It's like... Look, you should listen okay. to him, because rule number one, he he's wearing a dress. It's a robe. He's number two. Rule Look number what two. I can do. Does handstand. <laughs> it's like, I don't get how to do it. No, 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 he's got a point. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's an interpretive dance. <laughs> just doing a handstand. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Just great. He, he, does, he did have a point. There was so much... <laughs> Ooh, so much persuasiveness. Like, people don't realize if you want, if you're in a bad argument, just do a handstand, <laughs> and you'll <Yeah>. win. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, we are getting, we're, we're just doing, we are just goofing around here, uh, having fun. Yeah. Um, once. Oh, we're we're having fun. Once. Owen. It's like yeah, I'm only really... here for the internet fame. <laughs> What about you, Owen? Come on, you must have some kind of favorite Disney villain. Mm, let's see. I always see Jafar. I knew it. <laughs> Why? Jafar it's, is probably like my third beard. favorite. It's the honestly. beard, isn't it? Nah. The curly... <laughs> Don't tell me it's because of his sequel movie. Yes. <laughs> honestly, it's more of a song. It, 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 yeah. it rhymes so well. <laughs> it does. Dang. Like, honestly, that's the best part of the movie. <laughs> is his... Is uh, Jeff, Genie Jafar's second-rate song. Literally the best <laughs> part. I know, my, my favorite part is Prince Ali, Fabulous E, Ali Ababa. <laughs> Stronger uh, than Ted, regular man, definitely. He faced a galloping horn. Eleven bad guys with swords. Yeah, I can't remember the lyrics off my head because Aladdin's like one of those movies I really like, but I hardly watched, so I don't remember most of the lyrics for the songs. It annoys me. Honestly, the Aladdin was my first uh, exposure to Robin Williams, and I loved it. I loved it. It was my. my, I I think for most young people, like yeah, but like it was the first, like literally, was my first Disney movie too. I love it. I loved the Aladdin. The second one, of course, was Lion King. <laughs> my, my, my first Disney movie was The Lion King. Mine was Robin Hood. Aww. <laughs> I used to watch Robin Hood a lot when I was younger, and no one knew what it was. It was like that one forgotten film. I never film. cared for it. I it never like, cared for uh, Robin Hood. Like, I feel like Robin Hood, The Black Cauldron, and, to, yeah, okay. and then I'll say like, Treasure Planet. To some the extent, I would Planet. say Lilo and Stitch. To some extent, but not all, an awful lot. And whoa, whoa, whoa. are you dissing Lilo and Stitch right now? No, I'm saying these are the ones that always get forgotten. Yeah, no, Lilo Lilo. Stitch. you know Lilo and Stitch is my favorite Disney I movie. Know. All right, like, it is Lilo my favorite. I fucking love it. Forgo- Lilo and Stitch doesn't get forgotten. It just gets all jumbled up because don't no one remembers which one was the first one. <laughs> <laughs> because there's two Lilo and Stitch movies. There's the movie. It's free, isn't there? There's Leo and Stitch, there's Leo and Stitch, the one with all the cousins, wherever we're introduced. Then there oh, was yeah. Leo and Stitch 2. Stitch has Stitch Near Dies. Yeah, there's spoiler, Stitch, Stitch Near Dies. There's Leo and, and Stitch. Then there's, then there's Leo and, and, and Stitch. Leo and, Leo and Stitch is literally just a move. There's just like, how do we end this series well? Like, how can we end this? Mm. And then they're just like, guys, there's only one way we can end it. We have to make let's a movie. Just throw everything in together into let's a hot mess. Ma- let's just make a movie. Well, what's the point of the? What are we going to make the movie? We're going to make a new experiment, okay? And then we're going to clone him, and then make an army of him, okay? But we've done the evil stitch thing, I know. But we'll make this one even more evil, <laughs> <laughs> and we'll make sure that like the hamster. Breaks out. You mean the gerbil? No, he's hamster. He made that very clear in the casting department. He is a hamster. He made that very clear. <laughs> he, hamster meal. He has literally bitten the ears off of interns for getting that mistake. <laughs> we we cannot stress that you have to call him hamster <laughs> We cannot stress this. Anyway, <laughs> well, let's just make evil or stitch. Evil or evil or stage, make an army of them, and then have the experiments fight them. And then we'll have Stitch dress up like Alvis and make like another Alvis song. <laughs> and then we'll have all the experiments. Like you know that one moment where you get high and like the first thought you have is what if like Mount Rushmore or freaking the force like Star Wars had a band who would be playing one instrument? Yeah, let's do that. 
<laughs> but with all the experiments. So you want to give every experiment an instrument? Yes. I like where you're going with it. <laughs> but wait, what about freaking 625? Let's give him a name. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I think that was the moment that they just realized it too. I think they were writing the script. It was just like, "Hey, dude, you keep writing six two five. Have we literally not given him a name yet?" Nope. Dude, we've made almost a hundred episodes. How have we not named him? <laughs> yeah, He's um, literally just numbers. <laughs> I remember seeing like a meme which goes like, "So how did your internet addiction start?" And it literally shows the one mini game they had on, that, on the Disney website, which was where you just play as him and stack up different like foods on a sandwich. That <laughs> was literally just it. That was all I did. <laughs> I'm not joking. Really? I played it. I played it for hours. Oh yeah, no, it was a great game. <laughs> it was completely pointless. It had a point system that didn't matter. <laughs> Except yeah. to you. <laughs> and you just got to play as him. <laughs> there was no purpose. I can't even remember the name of him. I only watched the Heroine Stitch once. Uh, he was Ruben. His name was Ruben. They went through a list of different sandwich names. <laughs> and li literally, the scene is Lilo realizing, huh. I haven't named you yet, but now that you're doing something nice, I guess I have to name you. <laughs> because apparently L Lilo is literally, and this is sanctioned by the universal government. Okay, Maybe I want this to be known. She is the only one <laughs> who has qualified. any legal... She is qualified, licensed... And it can is the only one who can legally name the experiments. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, get, you know, Jumba's got to feel a little salty about that. Well, she didn't name Stitch, did she? Didn't Stitch say to her that his name Stitch? She yeah, says she, that in her thing. Like she says, he says his yeah. name Stitch or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She like literally the, as they're arresting Stitch, they're just like six two six. We'll be going, and she's just like no, name Stitch. <laughs> and then she's just like, Stitch. <laughs> and at that moment, I would have just been like, I don't care what your name is. You're not getting arrested. Get into the ship. End of Lilo and Stitch. Like, they're just near the end before they like, let him stay. Like, I remember crying. So oh, yeah, like, no. My you... family. It's like, it's like, it's small and broken. It's still good. Yep, still good. So I was like, no. <laughs> oh. I love when Jumba realizes it in um. What wh which one was it? Was was it Stitch has a glitch? Mm, well, I'm not sure when he realizes what. Okay, Jumba doesn't really acknowledge that he has a family. I think until the sequel. I think it's Stitch has a glitch. I think it was. Okay, yeah. When he makes that realization, I teared up a little bit. It's just like, <gasps> Jumba, come here. <laughs> <laughs> You know you've always had a family. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> oh, you just want to hug him. <laughs> like, yeah, I know. Uh, but, <laughs> like, oh, man. And some of the ideas, like, but you got to admit, they had to end. They ended Lilo and Stitch pretty well, and then they brought it back because I feel like Disney the, or... I feel like the end did, like, I don't think Leroy and Stitch was, Leroy and Stitch was amazing, but it ended on a decent note, like, for what it was. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, Leroy and Stitch wasn't that good. You know, like, they could have just ended it in the nice, it wasn't happy the worst way. Disney, it was not the worst Disney se sequel. Like, I feel no. like Leroy and Stitch got, got decent Disney sequels. Like, in comparison like, to everything else. The reason I don't, like, I don't just, like, like go, oh, forget this movie, is for two reasons. One, I legitimately do enjoy the ending fight scene. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Hello? Did he just disconnect? Please, no. He suddenly just went silent. 
No, he's been kidnapped by Disney again. <laughs> Disney is like, no. <laughs> what even were we talking about? I think we were talking about Disney villains for a week. No, but we were talking about something, and then we brought up Hades, and then it went into different Disney things. And then, like, we talked about our first Disney movies, and you mentioned Robin Hood. And I said, I feel like, like, that and XXXXXXX, like, are the Disney movies that tend to get forgotten. And then we went talking about Lido and Stitch. Fixing thing. Uh, fixing thing, okay. So, um, do you want to talk about Monster Hunter then? Wow. Well, yes, we can talk about a bit of Monster Hunter World. If you desire. Well, we need to talk about something. We can't just sit here awkwardly. Yes. Um, <laughs> more news came out from Tokyo Game Show from last week. Uh, they were showing some of this new areas, new of the new monsters will be appearing, and we're getting some new <clears throat> features like the Monster Hunter or Monster Wikipedia was actually in the game. Well, basically, we'll show the monster's elemental weaknesses and certain body parts, and how much, you know what you get, what weapons are affected on certain body parts as well. So it's really good with that. Um, as well, they showed some more of the newer, newer monsters type of thing. Like this monster, if <clears throat> it will damage itself, but it makes him more stronger. It's like he'll rip like one of his like spikes off his back type of thing he's like an edgy teenager yeah and then he grows stronger spikes what your weapons will bounce off basically and i got these new type of raptor uh rap raptors in this game as well what have like uh blinding effects on them but do they have the great mikhail How have we seen so far? No. But do they have it? <laughs> I want my raptor kangaroo bird thing. <laughs> no. I need it. It's the one monster I could solo. <laughs> one adorable wyvern. It's a bat type thing. And its neck fluffs up. Into <gasps> yes, I seen that on Twitter. It's so fluffy. Yeah, and, there's, and it has uh, like a prey comes after it looks like a gremlin with wings and it's purely white in that and you can make them mm. fight each other it's like Ooh. yeah i like how it's like a new feature where like you could deliberately beat monsters into like others territory to get them to fight i feel like that's it makes the world feel a bit more alive and less of there's just one thing that you need to kill and everything else is just there for materials yeah and sure isn't that the whole thing that you can train your palicos to be able to speak like the small creature language thing? Yeah. So that they can get you can get the smaller stuff to attack. Yeah, I, I I love the new additional features with the weapon tree. Brian. I never heard about the weapon tree. What is this weapon tree? You know the weapons when you upgrade it, and it goes yeah. to a weapon tree branch of that. Oh yeah. Series. You can do is. If you didn't like the weapon in that branch, you can decrease its level and go down to the opposite side of the branch, and you. Can oh, so like you don't need to like farm the weapon again and then build up the other branch. You can go back. Yes, and then you keep all the materials you went back on. So. Well, because you know I haven't played Monster Hunter enough to get to that point. Yes. Okay. Where was it? And as well, what I've done is. They're made like a, it's like if there's certain like materials you need and you forget what what you need they make a quick note thing list so it will make yeah so you can like do it on a list so you'll be able to see exactly what you need when you're out farming or whatever yes and the best thing is you can actually craft the weapons or food while you're actually out on hunts mm -hmm. in your mini uh base or mini campsite it's like you know that everyone's going to abuse that system. <laughs> as long as they don't introduce weapon durability, like it's fucking Breath of the Wild, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Um, I will not tolerate my Bogon breaking on me literally every five shots. <laughs> yes. Um, 
and as well there's other mini features <clears throat> oh, like they did show off like other things like the the ps4 um themed once on to well but we don't know if it's only uh, it's only ex exclusive to japan at the moment but it looks very nice if you buy the game physically you know you get the cut edition you get like a nice scale statue of the monster from the new flagship monster um the special glamour set you can glamour your armor set to look like a talisman for your character and a few stickers when you're playing in the game as well your talismans will level up as well you can upgrade your talismans with mm. material and money so if you've got a certain uh, talisman with certain skills you liked but you want to improve the skills you can never level it up and uh, the abilities will level up as well hey welcome back Ron. yes welcome back Ron. So yeah, so we know that we are definitely have some fun on Monster Hunter, uh, World of Monster Hunter when it comes out January 26th next year. That's only less than four months away. <laughs> and you'll never hear from um, Owen here ever, ever, ever until like next year. Ha 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 ha, very funny. I do like to play between other games, as I think myself out on Monster Hunter. Ground you there. We got cake. I can see if you went away because we were in the middle of a sentence, either or are you still having problems? I think he's having some problem mods. No, I just don't have anything to say about Monster Hunter. So... Okay, let's continue this discussion of only me and you. Let's talk about 14! <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, I, I was out from his own podcast. This is a spiteful. I was making a point. Well, well, I was making a point about the Leroy Stitch movie. You said you for, liked the fight. You said for two things: you liked the final fight scene, and then I was about and, to say the other reason is because most TV shows would try and do a wrap up in like a, an hour long special. And it just be an hour long special of the show, you know. Mm. And it's just like, oh, it's the last experiment, and it's a doozy, you know. And then it's just like everyone has a happy home, and then the show ends. Yeah, they, they didn't. They didn't. It made an anime spinoff. Well, an anime the anime spinoff doesn't exist. No, it does not. We don't talk about it. <laughs> I liked it. I found it okay. Owen. Owen, do you Owen? want to keep your kneecaps? What? <laughs> Isn't it okay? Do you want to keep? Do you want to keep <laughs> your kneecaps? You know where I live. Do you, I, I know can find where you live, bitch. <laughs> Owen, no. I know where you live. Bring it on, bitch. <laughs> but the difference, the difference is right. He knows where you live. I'm close enough to I can get so I can get there cheaply. <laughs> and you know, rightfully, as someone who used to play World of Warcraft, I can throw myself at the most mundane thing for literally months. I will knock on every single fucking door. <laughs> <laughs> I, Even if he didn't know, if he has the general vicinity of you, he will go. <laughs> I can bring it. <laughs> <laughs> you just be like sitting, like, you just be sitting like a monster and stuff. You're like, oh my god, I'm so excited! And next year, rock just goes through your window. <laughs> I will duct tape every stick I can find to just construct the longest poking apparatus. <laughs> <laughs> the travel across the entire Atlantic. <laughs> yes, that is how we are talking. Just to poke you in the face to remind you, <laughs> you are not out of my reach. <laughs> Unless I break it. <laughs> no, it'll become a national treasure. It's still great. <laughs> yes, it'll become a national treasure. Yeah, the I world's do. longest poking stick. And then you just destroyed the ecosystem by some really determined dance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it'll probably get destroyed by the world's hungriest termite. <laughs> the first stick actually tries to poke, so I just get a cat, and then the cat just 
No. Because <laughs> I will attach a knife to the end of it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like gently stab him in the back of the skull. <laughs> You're like, Owen, 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 Owen. And he's not responding. You're like, Owen, Owen, Owen. I was going to walk, so it's like, you're not stabbing me, you're, you're stabbing Gareth by accident here. No, he's just, he's just I like, mean, he's just it still hurts you. you. <laughs> either way. Owen, it's either I stab you or I stab him. It's still going to hurt you. Nah, you know, Gareth <laughs> will just basically call a favor to the mafia. <laughs> <laughs> I like I don't have friends in the mafia. Yes, he has friends worldwide at different mafias like the Akaza, the Swansea Mafia. Mine's Italian. Yeah, he has friends there. He has Italian. Yeah, well, I have connections in the Hells Angels. I have an info network in my local county. Plus, I have the internet. I have military. <laughs> I have military connections as well. Really? Yes. Well, my grandfather was a guard in an, an army base there. Mm. Oh, and you will learn very soon. I am the one person who knows everyone. Really? You didn't know who I was until I went and introduced me. Incorrect. I was connected to you in some way. <laughs> in some bullshit way that I will now construct. Right now. <laughs> I know Owen. I knew Owen. I said, Owen knew you. I said, Ergo. I said, until, until Owen met me, you had no connection to me. So? Say that. Logic. time, I will know everyone. Bitch, please. I will have connections. I will have connections everywhere. No, you would not. Yes. Eventually. How much of the Kool-Aid slash medication have you been taking today, Caleb? I have stayed away from the Kool-Aid in the last... Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> I was making a point, dang it. The, the, the Lethal and Stitch show ended in a movie. It, it just mm. It's a testament to how good the show was. That the people at Disney just went, guys, we can't end this in a feel good, happy thing. We need an epic we need an epic space battle with every experiment. <laughs> and then we need them to play in a band. And we need the bad guy to win. And and and, and we're gonna give six two five a name. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like he just did an epic speech and was just like, well, okay, fine. If we make a movie, what do you want in it? I want everything. <laughs> <laughs> I want every awesome thing you can think of. Coconut cake, put it in. Lasers, yes. Yo, mama. The queen of the, 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 the law keeper empress lady, you know, the blue one. You know who I'm talking about, right? Mm. A yeah. woman whose name no one can ever remember. I yes, swear yeah. she has one. <laughs> How about her being a res She's like high is she not like high chancellor or something? High Chancellor? Is that it? Is that her name? High Chancellor or something. I assume that was her title, but I could be wrong. Oh no. High Chancellor. She, she's, in, the high she's, chancellor in, she's in she's, she's, she's in Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep, enough said. <laughs> high Chancellor being a receptionist instead of the High Chancellor. Done. How about Elvis songs? Done. We can even have every experiment play an instrument to the song. It'll be amazing. It'll be like the most epic rock concert you've ever seen. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Come on, people. There is no stupid ideas. How about Tom? I swear you were the one who came up with the idea for the cat episode. <laughs> I will smack you. <laughs> <laughs> hear me out <laughs> Tom <laughs> hear me out <laughs> what if what if Myrtle's dog who we've already established as an experiment Tom I will smack you can talk now <laughs> I'm putting it in I remember that it was just like good job cousins like you could talk 
<laughs> I'm putting it in, but I'm still smacking you. <laughs> that was the stupidest thing ever. There was no point in having her talk. Her primary function was just to be a dog. Yeah. To be an annoying dog. Really? That was her function. Really? Really? All they did was like, okay, we need an experiment. Do you want, let's just make it a dog. It's like, oh, you mean like, well, we stitch like a weird dog koala thing. It's like, no, no, no. Make it an actual dog. And what's its what? power? You... It's a dog. It can <laughs> bark a lot and it annoys the neighbors. What's so evil about that? How can we sell that as evil? Are you kidding? Do you have any idea? You know what? I bet the, the screen process was like the guy came in pissed and was just like, what's got what's what, what's the matter with you? My neighbor's dog would not shut up last night. I am so <laughs> tired. Wow, that is diabolical. Your neighbor must be an evil genius to have planned this. This is all a conspiracy against you, isn't it, Jim? It totally is. Totally is. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make it an experiment. I don't care. <laughs> Do to it. Be I don't fair, care. You can argue that they did get a bit lazy with some experiments. Like, you know, five, like six to five is basically Stitch, but lazy and yellow and likes food. Actually, six to five. What? what six to five was one of the original. Remember? I believe so. Was, then you I, had. Uh, what was, was it? Was it six to? Was it six to four? Or ever? It was essentially a pink Stitch. Six two four was okay. Six two four was lazy. Sorry, Angel no. Which one was, was lazy? It? Angel, yeah, Angel. Angel, that one. Angel <laughs> was lazy. I am not denying you. <laughs> like I was just. It was it's, lazy. It's for if for he was female on pink. <laughs> okay, look, I'm not gonna lie. Female Stitch was lazy. However, her <laughs> power wasn't. What she actually could do was pretty creative. Hmm. <laughs> That she could sing and make any experiment evil again. I mean, Jumbo pretty much just made a reset button. <laughs> yeah, basically. It's like, in case anything goes wrong, reset button. <laughs> um, although 65 um, was the way he was, uh, I think because of the comic books um, that they made, he was actually Jumbo's like, sidekick. Hmm. He was like a comedic sidekick for Jumba in the comic books, which pretty much tells the story on how he got arrested. <laughs> and just all that fun stuff. I don't know, why'd you just bring up the rest of the, like, one of the first things in the video in Stitch? And it's like, does it have any redeeming qualities or whatever? And he just like sits there and is like, Mira, mana, Cristo! And he's like, oh, naughty! And then Jumba, I never I didn't teach him that. I did not teach him that. <laughs> like, <laughs> literally, like him going crazy in the little class, like fucking present thing. There is an episode that I can't, I ne I will never forget for the life of me because of the hilarious conversation that Stitch and Jumba have. So, in the episode, it's it's the episode with the experiment named Poxy, which is pretty much a like a, the smallest experiment. That's pretty much just a disease. Yeah, Jumbo yeah. made the plague. <laughs> Alien <laughs> plague. It infected and it got into Pleakley because of cereal. By the way, kids, yeah. don't eat Pops cereal, corn flakes. It could be contaminated with evil alien experiments. <laughs> they never check. But, <laughs> but and Stitch and Lilo were going to go inside of Pleakley's body to get the experiment, and Pleakley's just like, oh no, I don't want that little monster crawling around inside me. And then Stitch and Jumba have an entire argument in Alien over whether or not Stitch should drive. And <laughs> Jumba's just like, he has to drive. Why? He said the, w he said the word. I can't argue. <laughs> Apparently <laughs> Stitch said, w I don't remember the word anymore. But like Stitch said one word, and Jumbo's just like he he said it. I can't argue with it. You cannot argue. I'm assuming it's alien for please. <laughs> I'm assuming because it's Disney. <laughs> yeah. 
that he just said please in Alien. Like for the re- for like the rest of that month after that episode, I after I saw that episode, I was just repeating that word whenever I would get into an argument. It's just like you can't argue with me. <laughs> Watch the entire series. And just like find out episode. <laughs> it's a great episode. Poxy. Like was- that one. Like I read that one. That one was actually quite funny. I really liked that one. I love the lie detector one just for pleak. <laughs> <laughs> but you love, that thing. you love her, don't you? Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> like, like, if you watch it as an adult and you oh, just yeah, keep it's watching basically it, you expect him to come out. <laughs> you expect him to come out to his family, or like him to say something stupid, just like, "Yep, I love the ladies," and then the alien just goes off. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, you little idiot. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> You're just waiting for that one moment. <laughs> See, that's the episode everyone's waiting for. <laughs> the episode that when Pleakley comes out of the closet. <laughs> that's what people are waiting for. <laughs> um, But, yeah, man. Um... <laughs> I do love the the lie detector guy. Um, I enjoyed the um, honestly out of all the, the when Leo and Stitch was getting lazy, I will say, and they started doing crossovers with like every show that could go to Hawaii. Like even the ones where it made no sounds like recess. Recess made zero sense. <laughs> Like, like it was okay, a I, like trip. impossible made a lot of sense. I feel like American yeah. Dragon was kind of pushing it, but it's it was still somewhat logical. Yeah, the only sense that it made was that it was an international sports thing. Yeah, you know, which I mean, fine, whatever. We get Jake Long there. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care enough about why he's there. I just want to see aliens versus dragons, <laughs> <laughs> which we don't even get a lot of. Which is disappointing. <laughs> like I have expected the like the huntsmen from New York to show up hunting the aliens, thinking that they were goblins or something. <laughs> like that would have been a great crossover. <laughs> or heck, send Lilo to New York. That would be crazy. <laughs> I just the idea of her being at New York, so like she's like so she really stands out, not because like of you know just being a small girl like send- her address, but just because everything will be in the Mac. The American Dragon art style. Oh yeah, no. Like I would have. <laughs> you just have for... her with like the really, really like perfectly rounded, big nose. Or just like no, they would probably spike it <laughs> or something. Because like if you rem- like late in the later series of Jake Long, they got all angular. <laughs> yeah, like it all suddenly became like all square. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, there's like what the heck happened to your face, dude? You look like what happens to Tom in Tom and Jerry when he gets smacked in the face by an iron. (laughs) What happened to your face? What or who or what smacked you? So hard that it broke. Um, but, But yeah, no. And okay, the Proud Family one is my favorite crossover. And I don't think I've seen the Proud Family one because I can never remember it. Okay, the Proud Family crossover was it made enough sense because this was when um, Jumba and Pleakley were turning their old spaceship into a bed and breakfast, mm. which means that it's cheap, and the dad of the Proud Family would totally go to a cheap bed and breakfast run by aliens. <laughs> like he was, he's a that stupid and that cheap. Okay, that is a fact. Um, actually, I think, I think um, Sugar Mama won a contest or something that Pleakley was stupid enough to like send out, <laughs> and then like they're the ones who won. Thank goodness it was the Proud Family and not that so Raven. Don't say <laughs> just, 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 just like they just have her in, but they don't even bother animating her. It's just live action. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! If if they just sent, or if they just sent like it's like 
all Le- like if that's a Raven did a crossover with Lilo and Stitch, and it's all live action, and Lilo's live, and Stitch is just a CGI monster. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a mess. <laughs> Oh man! But yeah, no, like the Brown family was good. The experiment, his primary function was to shoot people and make them argue. Yeah, I definitely didn't see that thing because I do not remember right. that one. And it, the the reason it's my favorite episode is because the experiment shoots um, Gantu and Sugar Mama, and they have a wrestling match. Like, I'm not kidding. Like, like, I think, look, wait, no, I remember. I remember now. The Pratt family are in Hawaii because they won some contest with that, the Magic Johnson guy in the Proud family had, like, this weird WWE-esque thing in, like, Hawaii stationed. And the Proud family won a contest to go to Hawaii and see the first match. And Sugar Mama and... And Gantu got shot by the experiment and then jumped into the ring and did a Lucha Libre style match. <laughs> Which, as you can guess, Sugar Mama whooped his blubber butt. <laughs> Just destroyed him. <laughs> so if you're ever if the guys at Death Battle ever catch our videos, guys, put Sugar Mama against somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna see it. <laughs> Um, and anyway, um, we have but one more piece of news to talk about. Uh, we should probably get to the end of this. Um, and that is recently, a while back, we made a video, or I made a video, uh, about, uh, Magic School Bus rides again, and we questioned, should it ride again? And I have to say, yes. We'll finally say that. I have seen the show. I gave it a rule of three, and I have to say, I approve. I approve of the show. It gets the Grand Blue reboot seal of approval. Um, honestly, the only thing you have to get past is the animation. If you can get past the animation, it's not bad at all. I think that's the problem most people have with reboots. Just the fact that it looks different puts them off. Yeah, which Okay, look, guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm just gonna go on a rant here. Guys, if anything this Magic School Bus has taught me is it doesn't matter <laughs> if it looks different. It's gonna look different. The characters even sound different, okay? It's gonna be a little different. As long as it keeps like the core concept. Okay? For example, Teen Titans Go is a reboot with a different animation, same voices, but it has lost its core. Like, it has lost the main idea of the show, which is superhero fights supervillain. That is lost. (laughs) Right. The the Powerpuff Girl show, different animation, similar voices, but it does. It tries its best to keep the core concept. Like not entirely. I'm not going to lie. Like no. I, I've watched it, but I've seen things. Definitely do not seem like normal pop off crawls. Like fucking bubbles twerking of a panda. <laughs> no, no, no. It's definitely, they've dumb. changed things. But they, they, they. It is a learning process because, like, mm. you have to realize what's right and wrong, and then go from there. Yeah. And this show is definitely learning that and realizing. Okay, guys. We may have messed up a little bit (laughs) and focused way too hard on the whole girly aspect, which I will give some defense to the Powerpuff Girls because their creator of the reboot is the same person working on the My Little Pony. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you some defense (laughs) on your over girly aspect because you don't have a lot of things working for you (laughs) in the (laughs) fixing that department. You are trying and I commend you. (laughs) They are trying, and I will commend them. Um, If you bring back the Feminista, you will be my favorite. (laughs) 
for those of you who don't know who I'm talking about, there was literally just one episode where there was a supervillain who was a supervillain feminist. Um, and she, when she broke, when she would steal things, she broke, she, she, she was a bank robber. And whenever she would rob banks, she would insist on uh, a wreath of, uh, what, what is it? Um, Franklin? Susan B. Anthony Coins. Susan B. Anthony Coins. She refused to take any money with a man's face on it. <laughs> 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 she was, and the episode is just a big, fat, and people hated this episode. I loved it. <laughs> Because of the femin feminist supervillain. Just like, girls, if you arrest me and put me in jail, there'll be no more female supervillains. I'm the only one, aside from the one in the underwear. Mm. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, the power of girls, they're trying to get the core concept of what they were, while at the same time changing it enough to fit new people. Even the Ninja Turtles. It's a new look. S like, literally new voices, except for one of them being the exact same voice, just a different character. <laughs> but it gets the core concept. Ninja Turtles, Shredder, mutants, aliens, fight them! Ninja! And there you go. Throw in some old characters. And you got it good. And this show has got it down. The Magic School of His Rides Again has the core concept. Its animation may be different, but it's the same class that we grew up with. It is the same class, minus one character. Dee Dee Phoebe went back to her old school, apparently, um, to make way for a different character who is pretty much the science cop out. As I call her. Um, she is a in, super intelligent character who literally can build anything that you need in a flash. She's the script loophole. <laughs> <laughs> and plus, let's admit it, Phoebe was annoying. <laughs> For those of you who don't know who Phoebe is, she's that one girl who... In, oh, her only purpose... I swear to you, her only purpose was to make you re realize this can't happen in your school. <laughs> All the cool stuff that they do will not happen at your school. <laughs> I swear that was her only purpose, was to remind kids that this wasn't real. Like, her only line in almost every episode was, we didn't used to do that in our old school. <laughs> well, you know what? She eventually went back to her old school, which, you know what? you got to feel bad for her. Like, how do you go back <laughs> after Miss Frizzle's class? How do you do it? How do you go from a field trip that turned you into a fish <laughs> to just doing math problems? How do you do it, Phoebe? Commendable. You are a saint. Commendable. <laughs> Commendable. Um, but the new character is okay. And again, it's the same characters. Got Ralphie, Carlos, you know, all of them, Keisha, like they're all there. They're all the same. Um, they even did a tie in with Weatherman, um, which was like their superhero. Um, and I can't believe they brought her back. Janice came back. I freaking hate her. Arnold's annoying cousin. However, they did realize she was annoying because she only shows up to just complain. And then she's never in the episode again. She shows up at the beginning to make them want to do something out of spite. <laughs> And then she doesn't show up. She doesn't go on the adventure. She doesn't go on a field trip. She doesn't do anything. She's just there. She says things and then goes away. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful use of a character. 
Um, Arnold is less whiny, which I don't mind. I kind of like it because eventually you have to get used to the fact that your bus can transform into a frog. You, you just get used to it eventually, I guess. And just learn to go with it. Um, uh, as for the new Miss Frizzle, it is not her daughter, so it's not a cop-out, people. It is her sister. Uh, Miss Frizzle is still in the show, but now Miss Frizzle is a professor and does not need to be a teacher. <laughs> she has a doctorate. Apparently over the summer, Miss Frizzle got a professor. She got a doctorate while she was gone, <laughs> while everyone was gone. She is a professor now and is just touring the world, answering science questions from a global scale. Um... So Miss Frizzle is still there. It's this, I think it's the same voice actress too. Um, um, but we have a new Frizzle so that we can keep going in case she dies. Um, and she's not bad. I mean, she's not great. You know, some of the stuff is a little boring com by comparison. But, you know, it's not terrible. Like, you know, I'm not... Like, most people are going to be watching this show to learn something, so it's fine. <laughs> and it actually is pretty educational. Surprisingly, I learned something <laughs> that I didn't know. Um, so, whatever. Um, so, yeah, no, it's a good reboot. I don't know why so many people are hating it. I really don't. Um... But yeah, Miss Frizzle's back. She's still there. She she's saved at the end of episodes to um for the I'm looking for the magic school bus segment where you ask science questions that, you know, the show had to simplify for story purposes. You know, like the kids got turned into this thing. Is that how it works? No. Are you no, what's wrong with you, stupid? No, that's not how it works. This is how it works. This is science. <laughs> you know, and then she kind of gives a hint. The next episode is going to be about this thing. Um, and as I mentioned before, they I hoped that they went into more detailed things or maybe developed some more concepts. And they have. And there is modern technology in the show, which I know people are going to be like, Oh, why do these characters have tablets? And stuff, and I'm just like, guys, they need that stuff. Mm. They need new technology. Because I don't think they can do what they do in a textbook anymore. <laughs> um, so, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> Stop complaining that DA has a freaking Frizz tablet. It's not even an iPad. It's a Frizz tablet, people. Okay? You can calm yourself. <laughs> Okay, and apparently it, there's subtle hints of the Frizzle past. Apparently, Miss Frizzle and her sister built the magic school bus <laughs> with their own two hands. Heck, if I know if that makes any sense. It's like they're really pushing the magic thing to let people know, guys, it is magic. This is a magic school bus. It can do whatever the... <laughs> There is no logic to it. There's a sort of Satan. <laughs> this is like, guys, there is no logic to its buttons or its switches. We press it and it does a thing. By the power of Satan. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you want us, if you want the magic school bus to go head to head in a racing, in a race against the Tarnus, well, guess what? Now it can teleport. Now the magic school bus can teleport. It can do whatever the heck it wants. So stop complaining. All I care about is that it can still it still does the whole spinning animation. That was my thing. Like I was afraid it wouldn't do it. And it does, and I'm happy. <laughs> I don't care if that's a stupid thing to enjoy, I always enjoyed it. <laughs> to just see the transformation. Um, but yeah, no, the reboot's good, and if people are hating on it because, oh, the animation's bad, oh my god, yeah, it's bad, but guys, come on, 
It's on Netflix. It's not that good. It's it's a TV show that's supposed to be designed to educate your kids. Its only purpose in animation is to have bright colors that move. It doesn't need to be the same quality as freaking uh, DuckTales, okay? It's not going to be that good. <laughs> Does it need to have shadows that you can make that makes you see that it's 3D? No, this is the magic school bus. What is wrong with you? It's an educational show. Unless you haven't been standing here wants to watch it. Yeah, I mean, I watch. I'm gonna finish. I I haven't see, finished watching the season. I'm gonna finish watching it because I legitimately enjoy it. Like I legit enjoy watching it. It's not bad. I guess it's one of your guilty pleasures. It is. The Magic School Bus has always been a guilty pleasure of mine. Um, it is indeed a guilty pleasure. I'm not gonna stop watching it. I enjoy it. Um, I. <laughs> We that. Yeah. Like, I do Judge, Judging. Oh, judging quiet hard. you. <laughs> quiet you. My mother is a science teacher. Of course I enjoy the show. It's literally all I had to watch after school. It was fun. Could be worse. He could be making a, 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 a nuclear bomb after school. <laughs> <laughs> Later. Um, but also... And this is kind of a big thing that I'm sure people would have been complaining about if they hadn't done this. They do have the original theme song. And if I swear, I know they're going to be out there, any of you complaining that it's sung differently, I will come and find you <laughs> and smack you. It is the same lyrics to the same tune just a little bit of an update so it's not the same thing for the new show it is the same lyrics and it is still catchy <laughs> as all hell i still have it in my head You know, and like the baked into a pirate magic school bus. Ride a liver of lava. It's a magic school bus. You know, it's catchy. It's still catchy. It's great. The show is good. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if like there's a teacher out there who's watching this and is just like, okay, next year, I'm going to plan literally my entire science program around this show because <laughs> you can legit do this like every episode touches a different subject of science and you can literally plan it so that you can be like at the end of the episode when miss frizzle goes maybe we'll learn about this thing next time and you'll be like well class miss frizzle just gave you hints of what our next lesson is going to be you know it's the fun of taking a field trip, but staying at home. <laughs> it's fun. Um, and um, apparently, one funny joke that I found in the show was that there are constant references to a permission slip that Miss Frizzle has sent out. And apparently the parents think that she's joking <laughs> when she says something like, I'm going to have the kids turn into snowflakes and fall down a mountain. <laughs> she thinks that they are jo she is joking and it is a, like a metaphor for like a game they're going to play. <laughs> no. <laughs> she means she's literally going to drill into the Earth's core into a volcano and they're going to ride the lava out of the volcano. <laughs> She is not joking. She is very literal. I swear to you. <laughs> I have burn marks. <laughs> I can prove to you she is serious. Like, I love that the parents do not take any of this seriously. They're just like, oh man, your teacher is so funny with these permission slips. But I sign them. They're so funny. 
No questions. <laughs> no one questioned the permission slip. <laughs> no one. It's it, it's a it, don't don't do it. And I swear, there's episodes where Miss Frizzle just kidnaps these kids after school. I swear. Just to do something stupid. Um. Anyway, uh, the, the reboot's good. Don't complain about it because you're nitpicking and you know you are. Don't do it. Um. I don't have anything else to say other than that. Anyone else? Nope. Nope. All right then. Well, this has been a fun time and talking and chilling. So until next time, everybody. I'm the Grand Blue. He's Yami Owen. Mm-hmm. He's Chris. Hi. That was adorable. And I will see you next time, where we will be talking about My Hero Academia, hopefully. Or maybe the debate against who wins, girl power or Thor power. Bye-bye. Bye.